So what is a fixed asset in Umoja? Okay, this is basically for people that are not from finance. Uh, Umoja as, uh, assets accounting deals with accounting of fixed assets, which means that uh, we are, from the finance point of view, there are certain assets uh, in emission that meet what uh, what we call capitalization criteria because it, they have the certain value and they last for a certain period of time and there is depreciation. So all this is tracked in finance. Okay, this is typically for this scenario. This is buildings, but it can be also tracks or software. Okay, okay those are fixed assets. So fixed assets, for your information, um, there are assets or items that. Uh, last for and they can be used for more than one reporting period. Of course, a building can be used for more, for more than one reporting period, hopefully. They can be tangible or intangible, and, and they have what is called the net book, va net book value. Okay, so for fixed assets in uh, accounting, financial accounting, we need to understand and we need to measure and we need to keep uh, control of the value of the asset because this is then reported in the financial statements. That's why it's very important that it's done accurately. So for every fixed, for every fixed asset in the system, there is a, a master record that contains information about this fixed asset, including the funding source, its capitalization date, so when it was uh, the building completed, what is its useful life, if it's going to last in principle for five years, for 10 years, for 20 years. And then within this uh, context of uh, fixed assets, there are different ways of for you and to acquire assets. The um, reason why you are sitting here for this VC is because of one of, the, one of these ways is what we call self-construction. So you and can build assets, right? We can have a construction projects to build assets. And this is what we call when we are building an asset, is what we call assets under construction project. So there are assets that are internally uh, constructed or developed, okay? And they are considered assets under construction. In the future from now on, you may see the acronym uh, AUC, which stands for assets under construction. But for you to know, since you are from different missions, what, how does this uh, reflect to your uh, reality, okay? so. We are talking about the field or about your compound. How can you identify what is an asset under construction? So I've met, I've met, uh, I've downloaded some uh, projects, AUC projects from your missions, and I'm going to show it to you later. Okay, so you will identify. For every asset under construction that you may have in the system, okay, you will have what is called project. Okay, you may have assets under construction. You may have them of of different, uh, let's say, types, or, or that they will result in different asset classes. You may build uh, a building, okay? You are, this is a construction project for a building. It could also be infrastructure. It could be security fence. It could be a uh, water uh, pipeline, for example. It can be leasehold improvement or intangible. For most of your scenarios, as asset under construction, you may have buildings, new buildings in your compound or in your mission, or infrastructure. All this is considered asset under construction and has to be tracked properly. So most of the examples that uh, I, I have seen in production are buildings on infrastructure. So start thinking, if you are uh, listening to me, start thinking about what new buildings or new infrastructure uh, you are um, constructing in your, in your mission. So the cost, when we are uh, building something, the cost of the resulting of the final building, all right, includes materials, labor, and operational cost. All this, so when you are building, let me just explain it without the slide. So if you have an AUC project, at the end, when the building is complete, from the financial perspective, they need to report what is the value of the building, right? You build something, and it has to go to the financial statements, to the reports. So finance people need to report what is the value of the building. How do they know what is the value of the building? So we are looking at the cost, the material that have been used, contractors, consultants, labor, any type of um, service, but also materials. That's why you as inventory managers 
have to be aware of the process because there is a special way of doing MIGO, of doing good issuing, that would impact in the cost of the project. All right? So is this clear? So the idea is that you are here for you to understand how this, your transactions are impacting the project. What projects are you normally going to be impacting? The projects that you're going to be impacting are set up in the system normally by engineers. So if you are requested to issue materials out of inventory that go for a project, the first thing that you need to ask, the first thing that you need to do is to ask engineering section, engineers that are managing the project, what is the code of the project? And for this, you need to be familiar with this new concept. Maybe it's new for you, maybe it's not. It's called word breakdown structure or word breakdown structure element. This is basically a code that will help you to identify the project. So if you are issuing out bricks, it's not the same if you, are, if you issue them out to build a bridge or to build a building. They are different projects. And we need to track them separately because then the value of the bridge is going to be one, the value of the project of the building is going to be a different one. So you need to understand, or you need to get from, if you are inventory managers, you need to get from uh, engineers, the code, the work breakdown, work breakdown structure element, WBAC. All right? Now this is, still, this is still maybe too abstract, so let me show to you some examples of projects that you have in your missions. I went to production, and I made an extract from the AUC project. So pay attention now so you, feel, you realize that what we are talking about is something that you can see uh, and touch. So what the, let me show you some existing AUC projects. For example, this is an extract from uh, Monusco. OK? So you will recognize some of the projects. For example, in Monusco, we have one project that is called extension of Beni Mavivi Airport. This is one AUC project. Monusco, do you recognize this project? There is another one that is called upgrading of electrical system in Bunia. What you see on the left side, what you see on the left side in this column, this is the war breakdown structure let's say the project, and this is the element that defines what part of the project you are building. Do you recognize this project? Upgrading of electrical system in Bunia, upgrading of electrical systems in Kisan, upgrading electrical systems in Uvira. Monusco, do you recognize this project? Do you know them? Do you, are they familiar to you? Please reply if you are listening to me. Yeah, Tom, Tom from the chat, yeah, Thank you. So, okay, Tom, are you there? We cannot hear you. Anyway, this is a list of projects that you have in, in Monusco. You have different of them, uh, some of them, okay? This is only a sample. Now, yeah, confirm. I the project, yeah. okay, okay, thank you, Tom, thank you. So people from uh, inventory managers, if you are requested to issue materials out of inventory, you need to know if it's going to extension of Beni Mavivi airport, airport or if it's going to upgrading of electrical systems in Kishangani or if it's going to construction of RDB camp. And then the engineers, engineer that is managing this project, have to tell you this WBS element, this code. So you will tell the system, all right, I'm issuing this out for this project, but I have also other examples. Let me show you from Unmis. From one means, I can see there is also a big project here that is called construction of water pipeline. Okay? One means, do you recognize this project? Is it familiar to you? Very well. So this, this is the project. And if you see here, there are multiple assets that will be uh, created after the project is, con is uh, completed. You have a ponton, you have a generator house, you have a pump house. You see, this is important. When you are issuing materials for this project, inventory managers in UNMIS, you need to know 
if the materials are going to the ponton, to the genera generator house, to the pump house, or if it's going to the fluctuation tank, because th as a result of this project, there will be multiple assets. So you need to specify to what asset under construction you are issuing materials. Otherwise, we will not know the value of the asset. And then we will not be able to capitalize it properly. Okay? I go to another example, Minusca. Minusca has several projects as well. Okay? And we have some, for example, okay, you will recognize it. Bangi, Socatel, they, are, they have some coding here. Okay? Okay, the description, okay, office, officer, some barracks here, for example. We have a barrack, we have officer accommodation, Kitandin. Okay, Minuska, do you recognize uh, these projects as well? This is why we are... Yes, we do. Okay, okay. So this is why... Okay, Arsim, thank you. Good to see you. This is why we are bringing you to the session. So let me show you another one from Unamit. I know this is very slow for you, but at least, uh, at least from, from now on, I will capture the attention of everybody. From Unamid, we have another list of projects, even though they are all initial, uh, in initial status. I don't know if because it has not started, but we have also construction of gold top, buildings, prefab dormitories, etc. Okay, Unamid, do you know do you know this project? We have also infrastructure assets. Okay, we cannot hear you. If you want to say something, just unmute yourself. I'm not even sure if Unamid is connected right now. And then we have also from UNSOS, okay? And we have also from UNISFA. I have seen uh, in UNISFA, I mean, from UNSOS, uh, we also have a lot of projects and assets and the construction that will be built. Okay, block dormitory. Is there someone from UNSOS connected now? All right. And then from UNISFA, we also have projects. All right. Stefano and uh, colleagues over there, you, do you recognize the project, environmental project, excavation of solid waste uh, landfills? We also have road reconstruction projects. We have prefab buildings of MoveCons. Unisfa, do you recognize the projects? Are they in production? Okay, so thank you. So that's why you have the projects there and when you are issuing materials to these projects, we have to pay attention to the following. Now, let me stop sharing one second. So this is one thing. It's good that I see you have projects there and they are set up. This is a good thing. There is a second consideration that you should have. And uh, I, I'm, I should have your attention. I don't know if we have people from uh, budget. So may I have your attention? So once the project is set up, okay, once the project is set up, there is a part that uh, may involve uh, finance and budget. So some of the projects receive funding and engineers should know and if they don't know, they have to discuss with the budget officers. You need to understand if the budget that has been allotted or redeployed to the project, it's for materials or it's only for services or there is no budget, all right? Especially engineers, you need to know if the funding that you have in the project is for materials or not. And this will have an implication later. For example, I took one, one uh, picture from Minusca, and I see that this production, that we have $2 million that have been allotted to the project, okay? Nothing has been consumed yet. Nothing appears as consumed. What I don't know, is if this amount, if this uh, uh, budget is for materials or it's only for construction services. This is something you have to clarify and you will need to use this information later. So you have projects and some of the projects have funding, have a budget allotted or redeployed. So you as inventory managers that are mainly the, the target audience, but also engineers, how is this process? I'm going to try to give you uh, now a short uh, overview of 
how is this AUC end-to-end -end process? So you recognize what parts of the process you have to take. You see here on my screen, you see four boxes. The first box that is green is the setup of the cost collector and funding. The cost collector is the project that I just showed to you. So the project that I was showing to you with the code is the cost collector. So on this regard, you are okay because I see that you are, your engineers are creating the project. And funding as well. This is done as well by budget officers. I see that there is some, there is funding, okay, in your, in some of your projects. Now, the second step in anesthetic under construction is cost collecting, collecting costs. And this is done through a uh, service entry sheet when there is uh, purchase orders for services or when there are consultants. But when it's, it's involving the cost, it's involving materials, it also requires your, your action. We will see it in the next slide. Then, up, then there is a process of settlement that is done by finance and the final settlement as well. So you, what we are here for is to discuss this step. Collect costs, which is where you are involved. So you see here on the screen, you, you see a lot of steps. This is the process, the end-to-end -end process for asset under construction. You see the creation of the cost collector. This is the project that is done by engineers. Then there is funding, which is done by budget officers, allocate budget. And then here in purple, and I, I hope this is purple because I'm sorry, I'm a bit colorblind. You have procure goods and services and issue materials from a stock. This is while we are building. And then the payroll if we are using uh, staff to build. And then all the orange steps that you see later will be for a fixed asset accounting uh, staff, either property management FA15 or FA16 from, from finance. Now, during this process, it's very important this part. And this is where you are involved. When we are issuing materials from a stock to the project, we need to track it. And this is where you are involved. How is this issue and material from a stock done? It's done in the same way as you're doing now in terms of transaction. It is done using MIGO transaction, it's a good issue, and there is only one difference, that instead of selecting a cost center, you will be selecting what is called WBS element, or an internal order. So in this VTC, since there's a lot of people, uh, may some, sometimes you are not um, so uh, willing to ask, but I need to understand if what I explain makes sense to you. So you have projects and we have seen them. Then in the process of the construction, we, are, you, we may be ha uh, hiring a contractor, uh, I don't know, an external vendor for construction, we have consultants, but you are also using materials, typically from a stock. You may be using, I don't know, bricks, for example, uh, gravel as well. In this process, when you have to issue this out of the warehouse, it's very important the way that you do it. There is nothing new, really. You don't have to do a new transaction. How do you issue out of inventory? You, inventory manager, you, you do MIGO, right? T code, M I G O, right? If what I'm saying makes sense, please do note or something, or I have a bit of feedback, okay? When you do MIGO, I'm going to do a demo now to show to you how to do it. But don't get scared. It's the same thing. You only have to pay attention to a couple of things. And then for finance stuff that is around, I think you have a question or point. Before, before, before you continue, nice to see you again. Uh, before you continue, we, we, I mean, most of the missions, I'm sure, they have the same problem. The problem is just that most of the material is ordered in one fiscal year and received in another fiscal year because of the level of countries and whatever. But the material, most of the material, eighty percent of the material used in this fiscal year has been ordered in seventeen eighteen. Hmm. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you, Arsim. So yeah, for for particular situations, yeah, that's that's good, and we can discuss, and then it can be addressed either by reversing or maybe managing through your, uh, journal voucher. For that, we have also Muriel and Conda, and uh, we can discuss the step. My our idea here is to make inventory managers aware that when materials are going to a project, they have to pay attention to something. Okay, so at least new transactions are processed correctly, and then they also understand why we need to amend some of the process. So for now, I just told you, those are AUCs. When we are going to issue materials to the AUC, it's very important to issue them properly because it has to go, it has to be tracked to the project. So how do we issue them? Let me share again the screen, okay? And thank you for the question. Please do not hesitate. If you want to interrupt me, if I say something that doesn't make sense, I'm happy to listen to you. Okay, the same for Muriel and Conda if you are if you are there. So, issuing from stock to AUC. And now, what you're going to see is a small diagram. That please pay attention to this. Let's see if it makes sense. And if not, we discuss. But if you understand this slide, you understand the process, and then the goal of this session has been accomplished. Let's imagine one scenario. So let's imagine that we have a purchase order and a good receipt and we are acquiring 20 bricks at $1 each. Of course, you're thinking that the bricks are very expensive, but don't worry, this is only one example with numbers that are very simple, so you don't have to do the calculations. Imagine that they are very, very expensive bricks and we acquire 20 of them, okay? We have the good receipt and then we have them in inventory. Okay, so we have 20 bricks in inventory in total at $1 each. And we have an AUC project, one of the ones that you identified. So engineers request us to issue out 10 bricks. And then we do a good issue of 10 bricks to the project. And there is the MAP, which is $1. Do you know what is MAP? is the moving average price. Some of you may know, some of you may not. In this case, in this scenario, the price of the bricks is very simple, is $1, because we only have 20 bricks that we acquire. So the MAP is $1. So after issuing the 10 uh, bricks to the project, we will have a cost that has been collected in the project of $10. Why $10? Because there were 10 bricks, $1 each, $10. This is what happens in the system if you issue the uh, goods properly to the project. Now, why I'm bringing finance also to, to the session? Because it may happen. And then what do we have, sorry, what do we have remaining in the in inventory? We have 10 bricks, right? We bought 20, we issued them 10, we issue 10 and we have 10. What is the cost in the project? For now it's 10. But now let's imagine that we have another purchase order for uh, another 10 bricks. And this time they are more expensive. Their cost is $2, okay? So we have 10 bricks in inventory for $1 and 10 bricks for $2. So how are we tracking the cost? So what happens basically, is that the system puts together, because the bricks are exactly the same, it's only the price change. I know the difference is too much for the same type of brick, but this is for you to notice the difference. So what happened with these 20 bricks in inventory is that the system calculates the average price and they become 1.5. Why? Because you have 10 bricks of $1 and 10 bricks of $2. Now the average price is 1.5. Does this make sense? And then when we issue them, when you will issue them out to the project, they will be issued, you will issue them with the new movement average price. You don't need to do anything. This is automatically calculated by the system. But if you issue 10 bricks, whose price is 1.5, right? The new cost that you are acquiring is now $15 because it's 10 bricks and now the price is 
So in this way, every time we issue items out of inventory going to a project, we are increasing the cost of the project. And this is why you as inventory managers that are doing this good issue, you have to do it properly. You have to get the proper information from engineers, the right information, and you have to do it properly. So the cost that we are collecting here that at the end will uh, bring the value to the asset is accurate. Otherwise, our financial statements will be wrong and the inventory levels may be wrong as well. Okay, is this? Can I ask something? Yes, please. Thank you for, for mentioning that. This, I just want to add something more that's uh, very important to this is when we are insisting and emphasizing to use the correct product ID and not using generic, especially for construction materials, because when they come to stock, moving average price may vary a big difference between one to another one that will not reflect the AOC correctly as well. So, starting point, if you use it, if you like the correct Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Arsim. Yeah, this is a very important point. So the system to take the proper moving average price, you have to select the appropriate uh, product ID and it doesn't have to be the, the generic one. Okay. Now, please, all the missions, everybody in the room, is this clear? If you, if you don't understand this diagram, you will not pay attention next time that you are issuing out to project. It's important because we are tracking all the costs, all right? Now, if you realize that the moving average price is wrong, then you have to correct it, not, not inventory manager, but you have to involve finance. So as engineers, if the MAP is wrong, we'll have a problem anyway, even if the process is correct, or if the product ID is wrong. But in a nutshell, this is what we are going to do. So what, is there any question? Minuska, Unmis? Uh, Monusco, Unista, is this clear? Uh, yeah, yeah, David, again, yeah. again uh, sorry, yeah, of course you are covering this information because we are going through. The biggest challenge is here moving our price, you know, that's the effect of fear. Because, for example, I will tell you one case, we have 15 million dollars of this material that has been moved from multiple, from multiple stock cars to one PID. So we are talking about 15 million dollars. So this, in the same time operation cannot be stopped, in the same time we are going and changing PIDs, moving average prices and so on, which definitely in this period will have a big impact on, on, on AOC. It's just too yeah. good. Thank you. Thank you. And the same for the rest of the mission. So this, if you have a problem with uh, product IDs or uh, moving average price, it has to be fixed, right, before the process can go uh, properly as well. So if this is clear, Okay, let me, if this is clear, let me go to the next step. So how, now if you're inventory manager, now you understand, okay, those are AUCs, okay? And I'm going to do the good issue properly to the AUC. How do I do it? And this is the slide that you must have as a reference material for you. The previous one is for you to, uh, one second. The previous one is for you to, uh, this one is for you to understand it. This one is for you to print it and have it close to you. So when you're doing good issue, and we will do it uh, in a moment in the system, I will uh, perform a demo, demonstration. You have to select the movement type. Forget about doing uh, MIGO or good issuing without thinking what you're doing. Because if you don't change the movement type, you will be issuing out to the cost center as you are doing when you are issuing out any, ma any material. But if this is for a project, you have to select a different movement type. We will see where this is done. Who has to tell you the information for you to enter the proper movement type? Engineers. Engineers, you are key actors here. You are the ones that know the project. You are the ones that know to what element of the project the material is going. And you are the one that should know, on, or if you don't know, you should ask uh, budget officers if you have budget allotted for your project or not. Now, I've been checking, you have basically, inventory manager, you have six movement types that you can choose. 
but I've been checking your production uh, data, and I see that not none of the missions that are attending today have cost recovery scenarios. So you don't have the storage locations linked to uh, cost recovery funds. So we can focus on the top part of this slide. Okay, furthermore, and then uh, I have seen that in the system, you have internal orders for prey that started before July 18. So another uh, important thing to consider, and this is something that engineers and finance are aware, but also for your information, for projects that started uh, after 1st July 2019, the method to track the cost of the AUC is actual cost, and Arsene knows this one very well. So I've seen in production, and for the project that started after 1st July 2018, you already have projects in place. So you have to track the actual uh, cost using the project. I have seen internal orders as well, but they are uh, prior to this. But anyway, so what I'm saying is that most likely, most of your scenarios are going to be involving project structures, WBSE. So if you, as inventory managers, have to do a good issue for an asset under construction, the first thing you need to ask engineers is, okay, is this for an asset under construction? Yes. So give me the WBSE code. Give me the code. Okay? What is the code? What I was showing to you before. So let me go back to, to one slide. Sorry. Now it's... Dennis. Yes. This is Mary from RMD. Hello. How are you? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Those are prior to first July twenty eighteen. Yeah. Going forward from from first July twenty eighteen, we are using the project WBSC. Exactly. Thank any internal orders. Yeah. Exactly. So this is what yeah. this is what I also noticed. Okay. So uh, but I don't know in the mission your uh, this is what I saw in production. But I don't dare to say it unless you confirm it. So what I've seen is that RDC are tracked with internal orders, and what I've seen is that for any new project after 1st July 2018, I see the WBS element. I see the project yes. breakdown structure, which is good, yes. because it simplifies also the life of inventory managers. So inventory managers, if you are told to issue materials for a project, the first thing you need to ask to engineers is for the WBSE code. Okay, give me the WBSE code. What is the WBSE code? So if I share my screen again, you will recall that in the first slides I was showing to you these uh, screenshots, right? This is what you need to get from engineers. So Monusco, if they tell you to issue out materials for an AUC project, you need to get from engineers a code like this one, telling you to what part of the AUC project you are issuing out. The same for UNMIS, the same for MINUSCA, for UNAMIT, for UNSOS, for UNISA. You, need, you, you must get from engineers a WBS element that starts always with AA dash and then a numbering, okay? This is what you need to get. If they give you the number, and they will give you the number because it's in, their own, in our own interest, it's for the general benefit. If they give you the number, you will know immediately what movement type to use if you ask I mean, if they tell you something else. So once you have the code, 
you can use it here. But you have to also to need you need to know sorry if the budget has been allotted to the project for the material. This is also that the engineers would know. And if engineers don't have the information, they have to ask to budget officers, to finance and budget. In the scenarios we reviewed last week, there was budget allotted to the project, but only for services, only for the construction services. So if you have to issue materials out to a project, they need to tell you. Has been the budget allotted for materials, yes or no? If there is no budget allotted, then you use movement type 221. I think this is the most general case. But if budget has been allotted for materials, you use movement type movement type CW3, set W3. Or if the budget has not been allotted, you use movement type 221. This is like this moment is key. If you issue out with the wrong movement type, we will be tracking wrongly, we will need to reverse and everything will be a mess. So when you are told as inventory managers to perform goods issues to an AUC, they need to tell you, they must tell you if the budget there or not for the material. No. Okay. So tell me the WBS E code. And then you will use movement type 221. Or you will use set W3. I know I'm repeating 24 times the same thing, but it's very easy and it's very important. So I need to repeat it. You are performing good issues. Engineers, okay, this is for what? This is for the AUC project. Okay, that's fine. Is the budget allotted for the materials? No, no, there is no budget allotted for the materials. Okay, so tell me the WBSE and you perform it. If, so question to you, if there is no budget allotted, what movement type you will use to issue to an AUC project? Two to one. Two to one. If there is budget allotted? My, my question? Yes. Exactly. I'm, I'm saying engineers, and thank you, Sim, it's not only about uh, bricks or uh, construction uh, or raw materials. I'm mentioning, and then you correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm mentioning engineers because engineers are the ones that set up the project in the system. So the work breakdown structure in the system is created by uh, a person that is responsible for the project, and this is typically the engineer. So he or she is the person that knows to what part of the uh, AUC is going, okay? So next time you are issuing to an AUC, think about the movement type, okay? If this is um, clear, and I trust that if you are not asking anything else, it's clear. Um, just, just to add something. Um, Hi. Hi, thank you, Konda. Yeah. If you are 
Thank you so much, Juan. And that is a very important point that maybe I was not uh, mentioning. What we are saying about issuing two projects, a fake two projects that started after 1st July 2018. Anyway, the person that manage this information is engineer, so they will know if we have to capture actual cost or not. Okay, but uh, thank you so much because I, I did not think about this scenario where the project was there even before. Okay, very important that engineers are in control of these, um, let's say, decisions. So they know the inform they have the information, they will tell you, yes, yes, we are using the new method instead of depreciated uh, replacement cost, we are using actual cost. And then you have to issue to the AUC project. Okay, now this is the conversion issue. Ah, so I have to issue to the project. Okay, so tell me if tell me the WBS element, right? And tell me if there is funding or not, so I can choose between two to one or say W three. Okay, you have. Thank you so much, Konda. You have in the slide the list of movement types that you have to use. Okay, the ones that I highlighted are the most common ones for your scenarios, but it's important that you are aware of all of them. Okay, in case the situation change changes in the in the future so i'm going now to the system to see how does this uh, reflect in in Omoja, in the sap system okay so i will go now to the training environment and we will go together through one scenario that could be any of the scenarios that we i showed before uh, with your AUC project, okay? So, okay, so let's talk about uh, one AUC. So I'm going to show to you one of these, one project that is in the training environment, but you can imagine that this could be any of, any of yours. So the project that I'm going to show, this is an AUC project, it, this is uh, its code, AA000068. And, okay, what you're seeing right now is the work uh, breakdown structure. So you see in this column, you have all the WBS elements. Those codes, these codes are codes that engineers will give to inventory managers so they know where to issue out. Now, in our scenario, this is a camp, a construction of a camp. And in the scenario that I'm just coming up with, is, uh, we are going to uh, support the office building. So as part of this AUC, we are building different stuff. We are, uh, there, is a, there are buildings, there are accommodation, there is a hospital. And we are going to, we need to, we need to issue materials to this office building, okay? So let's imagine, and then you see it's an AUC, let's imagine that in your mission, you have to issue materials to one office building that is identified with this um, uh, code, with this WBS element. So how would we do it? How inventory manager would do it? What is the T code to issue materials out? M-I-G-O, right? Migo, this one you know. So we still go with the same, with the same uh, T code. So now the, the scenario is the following. Engineer has requested us to, to issue materials, to issue, in this case, uh, bricks, right, for the building. The same as in the, the, in the slide that I was showing to you the process. So you will do good issue, and then we will specify the correct movement type. We can do it here or maybe later as well. So what movement type do I need to select? So we go to the reference. We go to this reference. And then we ask, okay, you're asking me to issue materials to the AUC project. Right, okay. Uh, are, is there funding for materials. No, no, there is no, no budget has been allotted for materials. All right, then I take two to one as a movement type because it's for a project 
there is a, da a work being done structure in the system and there is no budget allotted. So we have, we want a non-budget relevant issuance. So we will use the movement type two to one. Here it is. Okay. And then we will select the material. We are going to use bricks. So we know, in this case, we know the, the product ID. Very important, as Artin was saying, the material has to be the correct one, otherwise the moving average price that the system will take in will be wrong. So in this case, it's brick for construction. Okay? Now before, before doing that, I should have shown something to you. Do we have, invent, do we have uh, bricks in inventory? Let me show to you first. So I'm going to show the uh, inventory level, okay, with the MMBE. This is a T code that most of you know already. Do we have bricks? This is scenario is for Monusco, okay? If you are uh, from a different mission, do not get confused. So with MMBE, I'm going to show the inventory levels, the inventory level for this uh, particular scenario where when we need to issue bricks. I'm selecting the plant of Monusco, I'm selecting the storage location, all right, and I run the report. Do we have bricks? Yes, we have 998,980 bricks, okay, that are unrestricted. So we have bricks that we are going to issue out to the project. So I selected bricks, now I go to the next tab, quantity, how many bricks we need to issue. As in our example, we, I'm just going to say 10. 10. I know it's a, a small amount of bricks, you will never do it, but it's for you to see the numbering that, that makes sense. 10 bricks, from where? In this scenario, it's from uh, Monusco, I think CD10 is Goma. And then 1104. Sorry, engineering gone. Okay, have I done anything new to you so far? I'm asking inventory managers. Did I do anything new? Are you surprised? May I have someone replying? Are you surprised did I explain anything new? Please, someone, no. Okay, so you are still wondering, why did you bring? Okay, so far no, so you are thinking now, why, why do you bring me to the room, you're talking for one hour and you haven't done anything new? So pay attention now, this is what is different. When you go to account assignment, you have to click on more. And here, you have to enter the WBS element. Who is going to give you the WBS element? engineer and it's not enough if they give you the project ID they have to be, give you the full element where the money where the uh, bricks are going to go why is that because if you take a project for example here if they give you the project number you don't know if the bricks are going to the airfield runway, to the fencing, or to the airfield prong, whatever. They have to give you the WBS element. And you enter it there. Okay? And you enter the fund. Now, you have done something different. When you go to account assignment, you go to account assignment, and you enter WBS element. Okay? And that's it. So two new things. One is movement type is not the normal one. This one is called GI for project, good issue for project, movement type that is coming from this tape, this uh, slide that I showed to you before. We are selecting this one, this one. Movement type, one new thing. The other new thing for you. WS element, you enter it here, click on, on more. That's it. Now, 
sorry for the training environment. I have to select the posting date uh, in December because I didn't open the posting periods for 2019. Forget about this thing. You only have to remember, of course, material has to be correct, the quantity, new things, new stuff, key stuff, movement type, 2 to 1 in this scenario, and WBS element that you enter it here. It's a bit hidden. Sorry for, for that. That is not so visible. That's it. Let me click on check to see if it works well. Document item is OK. And then we are posting. If nothing goes wrong, voila, we have done our good issue to the project. OK, the good issue is normal and the printout will open as normal. OK, whatever. I will. I will save it here and then I can show it to you. But nothing special. Now I've done the, um, I've posted the, um, the good issue. Now I have a question for you. After this good issue, what impact do you expect to see in the system? I need a volunteer brave enough to talk to everybody. So we did good issue. We selected movement type 2 to 1, and we selected WBS element. What impact do you expect to see in the system? Come on, Abasi. The class should be here. The class should be here at WBSD. Very good. First impact, the cost is tracked under the WBSC. Very good. And the second impact is inventory, inventory level. Very good. So let's go and see if it went properly. Thank you. So let's go and see if it happened uh, what we expected to, see, to happen. So let's go to inventory now, to the inventory level, which is the, actually I had it open in a different window. Okay, let's go to the stock. You see 998980, right? Let me refresh. 998970. Okay? We use 10 bricks from inventory. So this is good and that's normal. What else? The cost. So if we come back to the to this slide that I built for you, we saw the reduction in the inventory, in the inventory level. And now we're expecting to see the cost collected on the project side, as uh, Abasi said. So let me go and check the cost if it has been tracked properly. For this, we have the T code C J I 3. And then I'm going to indicate the project. The material, I don't need to indicate it. And then it was a posting date. I think it was in December. So if I run it, you will see today. I mean, I just posted it uh, today. But here we have $100. OK, that has been tracked. I think I posted as uh, 6 December. This is the line that I entered. You see, there is a cost track now of $100. $100. But how come we are uh, tracking $100 as a cost? If we are issuing 10 bricks, right? How does the system know knows that this cost is $100 and is not $50 or $20 or $40? How does the system know what is the cost? The MAP, right? The MAP, as we show in the slide, the MAP, the system is telling, in, the, in this scenario in the system, is telling the cost is $100. So let's see and check the MAP. How do we check the MAP? Moving average price. So. There is a T code that we, okay, that's one way. Also from here, sorry, I did not show. Let me go again to the Migo. 
or maybe I'll go up, I'll go at the end. So let me see the MAP. So we can go with, for example, M M03 to display the material. The moving average price is linked to the material. So if I go to the brick material and I go to accounting, sorry, I did not, one second. Okay. And I select Monusco because the moving average price is particular to the plant, right? Because you may have different purchase order prices in different missions. We should see the moving average price. You see these bricks have a moving average price of $10. $10. How many bricks were we issuing out? 10. Okay. So we did we did a good issue of ten dollars let me display the wood issue again of ten dollars of ten bricks i think this is the one we did good issue of ten bricks so what is the impact in terms of cost the system i'm going to show now the accounting document there is another way of seeing it the system is posting 100 dollars as a cost to the wbs So answering to my own question, the cost, I'm going now again to, to display the, the cost. There is a cost of $100 because we were issued in out 10 bricks and the average price of each brick was $10, okay? But thanks to the movement type that we selected, Thanks to the movement type that we selected, that is two to one, okay? That is here. And thanks to the fact that we entered the WBSC here, the system tracked the expenditure, they tracked the cost, basically collected the cost for the project. And this cost is the one that later will be capitalized by finance and then we will be adding value to the to the asset okay is this clear 